making right choices. To walk in God's will throughout our time on earth, we must deliberately choose to serve Him rather than the gods of this world. Here now is Gene. I love this passage in Joshua chapter 24. And here his charge is primarily to the leaders, though it certainly applies to all of Israel. And this is what he said, Therefore, fear the Lord and worship Him in sincerity and truth. That's what Joshua had modeled. Get rid of the gods your ancestors worshiped beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and worship the Lord. Don't get involved in idolatry. Don't depart from the living God. But if it doesn't please you to worship the Lord, choose for yourselves today the one you will worship. In other words, make a decision. That sounds, by the way, like Elijah with the prophets of Baal where he challenged them after the great victory over the prophets of Baal to choose who they're going to serve. And you know what happened? They were silent. Now at this point in Israel's history, they weren't silent. They responded to this challenge. We read about that as we go on. The gods of the fathers you worship beyond the Euphrates River, don't worship them, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. Make a choice. Who are you going to serve? And then he says, and I love this, as for me and my family, we'll worship the Lord. We have made that choice, and you've seen us make that choice. And he could probably have said, and I haven't been perfect. I've made mistakes. I didn't consult God when I should have consulted God. And we got into problems at I after the battle with Jericho. Remember, I didn't consult the Lord. I also didn't consult the Lord properly with the Midianites. But in spite of my mistakes, my goal has been to serve God. And that's my decision. As for me and my family, we will worship the Lord. And the people replied, we will certainly not abandon the Lord to worship other gods. They responded positively. I wish I could tell you that they kept that promise. They didn't. And as we move into the book of Judges, you're going to see what happened after Joshua died. And after all the leaders with Joshua died, they forsook the Lord. And tragedy happened. But at this point in time, they made the right choice. And the fact is that when we make a right choice doesn't mean that we're going to continue to make the right choices if we don't stay close to the Lord and stay in His Word and keep living for Him day by day. Joash made that mistake. As long as he was there with a counselor that helped him, he made the right decisions. But when he sought information from the wrong people, he was led astray. And there's a powerful lesson there for all of us. The reflection response question, in view of our wonderful blessings in Jesus Christ, what must we do in order to take Joshua's challenge seriously and walk in the will of God, making the right decisions? And one of my life passages, life verses that have impacted my life, are Romans 12, 1 and 2, and you've heard me quote it so many times, where the Apostle Paul said, I charge you by the mercies of God, I beg you by the mercies of God, in view of everything God has done for you, present your body as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to the Lord, which is your reasonable service. And don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I have a radio ministry, and I chose that word renewal for a very important reason. It comes right out of Romans 12, 1 and 2. The renewing of the mind. Why? So that you might prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. And after that, Paul goes on to explain what we must do to discover God's will. How we can live in God's will. What God's will is. Here is what he wants us to discover. And we put this in the form of principles when we taught the book of Romans. And let me just walk you through the principles from chapter 12 right on through the end of chapter 16 in the book of Romans. You have these listed for you. 
on your outline. We need a servant's heart. To live in God's will, we're to humbly serve one another within the body of Jesus Christ. If you go back to that passage, it says uh, there that uh, we're not to look only to our own interests, but the interest of others. We're to humbly serve the Lord. Another principle, to live in God's will, we're to continually demonstrate authentic love for one another. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love is the passage from which that comes. Avoiding vengeance. To live in God's will, we're to demonstrate Christ-like love to our enemies. That's one of the t toughest challenges. We're not to take matters into our own hands. We're not to take vengeance. We're to overcome evil with good. Doesn't mean there shouldn't be justice. And it's interesting that Paul goes right on to deal with the fact that there should be justice. But this is vengeance. We're not to take vengeance. Civic responsibilities. To live in God's will to be good citizens. Doesn't mean we should violate the will of God by obeying government, but it does mean that we should recognize that governments have been established in order to maintain uh, some semblance of, of organization because without governments there is chaos. As we know, there's chaos even with governments. But the fact of the matter is, we should recognize that government is a servant of God. Not necessarily those who serve because they depart, but the system is of God and the leaders are there in order not to have chaos. And as Christians, we're to do everything we can to pray for our government leaders. We read about that in Paul's letter to Timothy. To live in the will of God, we are to obey Christ's new commandment. What is that new commandment? Love our neighbor as ourselves. In that, there's a fulfillment of all the law. Love God with all our hearts, our neighbors as ourselves. That's all unfolded in the book of Romans. To live in God's perfect will, we're to walk according to the Spirit, not according to the flesh. You read about that in the book of Romans. To live in God's will, we're to avoid judging one another where God has given us freedom. Romans chapter 14. We're not to put on other people restrictions where God gives freedom because we have a weak conscience. But neither is those with a strong conscience to cause a stumbling block to those who are weak conscience. We read about that. We need to protect one another. Live in God's will. We're to avoid using our freedom in Christ in a way that causes another Christian to fall into sin. All of that's right there in the book of Romans. We're to pursue peace. To live in God's will. We're to do all we can to create love and unity in the body of Christ. In fact, Paul prays for love and unity within uh, chapter 15 uh, of the book of Romans. There's to be two-dimensional love. To live in God's will, we're not only to accept one another, that's one side of love, but we're to instruct one another, admonish one another. Those are twin concepts that God gives us in living in the will of God. To live in God's will, we're to reciprocate materially when we have been helped spiritually. And Paul really deals with that in the latter part of Romans 16, 15, when he talks, uh, he's raising money to go to take to Jerusalem for the believers there that are now facing a famine, they're in difficult straits because of persecution. And he says to these Gentile Christians where he is on the missionary journey, you are believers because of the Jews. And now these Jewish believers are in trouble. You owe them help because of what they've done for you. That's reciprocation. Paul made that very clear. Material obligations. And then the power of prayer towards the end of that chapter, he says, pray for me. Urgently, he says, pray for me and one another. To live in God's will, we're to pray for one another, particularly when we face difficult challenges in our lives. And then finally, a model of encouragement. All of chapter 16 is a model of encouragement where he lists all of these people, where Paul lists all of these people that have helped him and he greets them, and he thanks God for them. To live in God's will, we're to remember in a special way those who encourage us. We're to be Barnabases, as it were, in other people's lives. So, making right choices. To walk in God's will throughout our time on earth. 
we must deliberately choose to serve Him rather than the gods of this world. Isn't it wonderful that we have not only the book of Joshua, but we have the book of Romans. We have not only the Old Testament, but we have the New Testament. And we can take this whole biblical story, which gives us an incredible list of principles to guide our lives in order to walk in the will of God.